Hey guys, we're Pastors Tim and Barbara Rigdon of The Well at New Covenant. We're so excited that you've decided to tune in with us and we sure hope that you will be blessed by it. Yes. We want you to realize that God has something for you to receive today. Yes. And we believe that with our heart or we wouldn't be streaming it. So we're yes. believing God for you. We're praying for you yes, to be are. touched, whether it be a song or through the word. And as we say around here, watch, watch as, as you are, are you, you won't, won't leave the same. same. talk to you tonight about relentless relentless pursuit <laughs> now when I first started looking at this this week I thought relentless redemption <laughs> but that would be God what he does for us and that's what he has relentless redemption he'll go no matter where you're at no matter what you've been through no matter what you've done what you've not done he will not stop till he is able to touch your life and change your life or give you the opportunity for you to give your life over to him but the Lord said this needs to be more on your plate this time Tim I want to see relentless pursuit. Yes. This relentless pursuit of God. <laughs> now, uh, to get to make it official here, we'll read some scripture here to get some things going. <laughs> but in Psalms 63, verse 1, it says, <laughs> looks like 10 there, but it is 1. Oh. oh, God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsteth for you. <laughs> Amen. How many thirsty tonight for more of the Lord? <laughs> Amen. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And what I found out is a lot of people are in places in their life right now that it seems like there's no water. So this is a spiritual thing. And even in the prayer room, uh, Brent began to release this word even over us. You know that we've had a uh, prophetic words upon us and upon the services and things, and we've seen a measure of it where people are going to be healed, where the blind eyes are going to be open, deaf ears are going to be opened, and uh, that lame people are going to get and walk. Yes. And we've seen some miracles that we've had three people in the last four months that have been diagnosed and been healed of cancer. Amen. Uh, man, is that not exciting for some of y'all? <laughs> y'all, is this on? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And, but in that, the thing about that, that he released to us, it says he believed that there's spiritual lameness where people have been lamed by the world or by church or religion or the things of the world or the cares of life, and it's crippled you spiritually. And I believe that tonight can be your night, amen, to regain strength in your legs of spirit to where you can run the race and fight the fight of faith, amen. But in that, God, right here, uh, David's writing this psalm, and what's funny, if you look at the subtitles, you know, like on top of, like if you have a King James Bible, it'll get subtitles of when and what was going on, and it said this, it said, a psalm of David written from the wilderness, amen, and I believe there's some people under the sound of my voice, whether you're here or whether you're watching via the internet, that you're in a wilderness time right now, that it seems like it's a dry place. It seems like it is, that your land is thirsty. There's no water to be found. In other words, there's no answers to be found. Look what David goes on to say. To see your power and your glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. <laughs> see, there's some people, you, you may look at it and say, what in the world, I mean, what does that mean? I want to see the power and the glory of God that I see in this sanctuary, amen? When you say, say, well, I do too, do you understand what you're saying? Not just here. Not just in your church. I want to see it when I go home tonight. Amen. I want to see it going down the road. I want to see the power of God, the glory of God. I want to see it on my job site. I want to see it in the places that, that we don't 
perceive God's power and his glory to manifest. But I believe, and I'm, I'm here to tell and prophesy to you today, that there's come today and the hour is upon us now that the power of God and the glory of God is going to be manifested in the eyes of man that not just the believers, but the unbelievers are going to see the power and the glory of God, not just in the four walls of a church, but they're about to experience a revival and a move of God, and it's going to maybe happen outside the four walls of the church. <coughs> Amen. But see, he's saying, I want to see the power and the glory that I've seen in the sanctuary. But the verse before this, he's saying, I'm in a dry place. I'm in a thirsty land. There's no water here. But nevertheless, that's what he's saying. No matter what it looks like, no matter how dry it looks, no matter how thirsty I may be, glory to God, I still believe I can see your glory. Amen. I still believe I can see your power. I still believe it. I can experience what I experience in the presence of you in the church. I can experience when I leave here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He goes on and says, because, here's the reason. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. See, God's loving kindness. God loves us enough not to leave us like we are. He loves us enough. And you say, well, brother, I'm not what I used to be. Glory to God. But is that an excuse to stay where you're at? We've got to be ever growing and growing closer to God. Amen. And right here he says, it's because of your loving kindness, it's better than life and my lips shall praise you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen. And my soul shall be. Everybody say shall be. Shall be. It didn't say might be, could be, or if you held your mouth right. My soul shall be satisfied as the marrow and the fatness of my mouth shall praise thee in joyful lips. Glory to God. I've got the marrow and stuff going down. Hallelujah. And my bones are fattening to the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. <laughs> See, I found out a lot of people coming into church and you're praising the Lord, but they're just not with joyful lips. <laughs> well, they go over here on this side. That side's quiet. <laughs> I'll preach to you. I hear you. <laughs> so I know you're getting it. We go into church and we go through this experience and we have this great move of God and we feel it and we're like, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> you don't believe me? A minute ago I said three people been healed of cancer. I don't know how many people's been saved. And what are we saying? Amen. <laughs> you know the problem? <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't you. Bless God, if it had been you that had been healed of cancer, you'd be up here doing a dido and dancing for the Lord. Hallelujah. If it was you that God saved your marriage, it was you that God saved your soul, it was you that set you free, hallelujah. If it was you that God opened up prison doors, hallelujah, you'd be the one praising the Lord tonight. Amen. Oh, it's just beside me why you act like you do, Pastor Tim. Well, if it quits getting beside you and starts getting inside you, you'll know why I act the way I do. Because I don't know about y'all, but you're looking at an old preacher boy from the mountains of North Carolina that I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I once was bound up with sin, bound up with, with all these things. And glory to God, Jesus set me free. And because of that, hallelujah, I'm, I don't care what you think. I got some joyful lips going on tonight. Amen. Because the joy in my salvation is real. It's as real to me today, Brother Tom, as it was 30-some years ago when I gave my life over the Lord. See, when it stops being real, you better check your heart. When it stops being exciting, you better check your heart. <laughs> well, brother, we're not saved on emotions. I preached about that last Sunday. I said, we're not saved by our works. Or by, we're not saved by our emotions. We're saved by the grace of God, and thank God for it. But thank God I've got a God who is an emotional God. He's jealous over me. He loves me. He feels my, my pain when I'm going through situations, and he loves me enough not to leave me keep going away. He'll pull me in close to him, amen? Wrap his loving arms around me and just love on me. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I'm glad I've got a God that I can feel. <laughs> yes. Amen. That's the reason I got some joyful lips. Hallelujah. When I remember you upon my bed and I meditate upon thee in the night watches. <coughs> See, if some of y'all would catch this revelation, this verse right here. <coughs> when I remember you in my bed and when I meditate upon you at night, when it's late night, 
See, the problem is you meditate upon your problems rather than meditating upon him. The problem is when you lay down at night and it's quiet, that's why depression comes in. That's why oppression and all these different things are coming against the body of Christ. And we see the body of Christ defeated is because our minds are not upon the Lord when we go to bed at night. Yes. Hello? Yes. I mean, I'm telling you, it makes it a lot easier to say, well, brother, we just can't be all spiritual all the time. He says, pray without ceasing. I'm not talking about you being a super spiritual person. I'm talking about I want to see you walk in victory in your life. And if you're going to lay down at night and all you're going to do is meditate and go through your mind, everything that's wrong in your life yes. and everything that's going on, glory to God, you're not going to rest. You're not going to get the sleep you need. Therefore, eventually it's going to take a toll. That worry and stress that you're carrying into the bed at night is going to take a toll upon your body and your physical body is going to start to take on sickness and disease that wasn't meant for you, but because you're walking not in faith, you're walking in fear and you're living in fear every night. <clears throat> you got to break the cycle. <laughs> I believe there's people sick under the sound of my voice that you're dealing with situations and circumstances in your body that could have been taken care of if you would just give it to God. Yes. And I'm not talking about just being healed. I'm just talking about you're not thinking about those things all the time. Yes. You start saying, you know, the Lord promised me sweet sleep. <clears throat> and when I remember you when I lay down in my bed at night. I'm going to tell you what, last night I ate some chicken wings pretty late. <clears throat> Hot wings of the hero version. <clears throat> That's what, that's what it said on the thing. I said, I want the hottest thing you got. That's what they gave me. Uh, look. And uh, I can handle heat. I like heat. I like a lot of heat and spices. But I can't handle no flavor. All it tastes is like I put powdered pepper in my mouth. It's like a paste on these things. I didn't eat them all. But I ate enough of them to kind of, when I had to get up and go to the restaurant in the middle of the night, that it was... It was rolling. Hallelujah. So, is, this, is this too much for y'all? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to be real to you, okay? <laughs> it is for some of you. Some of you, click me off for a second. <laughs> but it was rolling. And I was like, oh, Lord, I don't want to be sick in the night. You know, my belly aching, pains of the third world country kind trying to manifest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord. And I remember I read this scripture before I went to bed. And I just started saying, Lord, I thank you. And y'all think it's as crazy or not? Barb, she's laying there snoring. I mean, she's just, <laughs> no, she don't snore. I'm just kidding. But she's laying there sleeping. And I just, and in the middle of the night, I just thought, Lord, I thank you. I pray for me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Lord, you said if I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover and they shall be healed. So, Lord, I claim my healing right now. And, Lord, I'm going to thank upon you. And I'm going to remember how good you are to me, Lord, all the time. And how blessed I am. Hallelujah. And I'm going to meditate upon you. And I went to sleep. And I fell asleep meditating on how good God was. I got up this morning. Glory to God. No pain. Hallelujah. Nothing manifests in my body. And you can say, well, that just kind of went away. You should have got up and got your roll There ain't no roll in the house. So I can't get that. Because... <laughs> Here's the thing. Right. You've got to quit meditating upon your pain. Yes. Because when you think upon it, your mind is a breeding ground yes. for vain imagination. Yes. <laughs> and even scientists have proven that 75% of the things we worry about never come to pass. <laughs> Amen? So I'm just trying to speak some truth to you in a roundabout way to let you know, hey, God's got this. He's got this circumstance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So meditate upon him at night. Quit worrying about the things in the night watch. Amen. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you've been my help. Because you did it once you do it again. What did we say? I seen you move. You move the mountain. And I believe. I see you do it again. If you did it once, he'll do it again. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever in Hebrews. Malachi chapter 3, he says, I'm the Lord that changeth not. He's the same. And so therefore, he ain't changed. If he healed you once, he'll heal you again. If he put together your marriage once and it's struggling right now, he'll do it again. If your finances is broken down, glory to God, he blessed you once, he'll bless you again. I hear people all the time say, oh, it's worse than it's ever been. No, it's not. Yes. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to break it to you because I want you to think reality-wise. There's people under the sound of my voice right now that you've come through worse than what you're going through right now. It's been a lot harder at times in your life. And guess what? You're still here. 
You're still here. Don't let the devil lie to you and say, oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's worse, it's worse than it's ever been. How in the world can God do this? Because I'm here to tell you, God did it once, he'll do it again. And if it happens to be worse than it's ever been before, glory to God, you're just a bigger candidate for a miracle than ever before. Why? Because he's been our help. And if he's been our help once, he'll be our help again. Glory to God. And when we realize this, it brings revelation, but it brings peace so we can sleep at night. Yeah. Hallelujah. But here's what I'm trying to get to. All that was free. <coughs> this scripture here has been in my spirit since the 90s. <coughs> that every few months, it's like God takes me back to this scripture. My soul follows hard after you. Thy right hand upholds me. My soul follows hard after you. See, that's relentless pursuit right there. Some of y'all may have remembered a book that came out, Tommy Tenney, years ago, late 90s, early 2000s. It's called The God Chasers. Anybody remember that? Hallelujah. If you ain't ever read that book, read that book. Amen. It's based off of this one scripture right here. It'll change your life. Amen. But this is talking about let's fall hard after God. See, here's the problem. When you're not following hard after God, it manifests in your spiritual life. You need an example, don't you? I knew you would. It's like this. Once you were following hard after God and you were there every time the doors is open, you were dependable and you would be there doing everything that God told you to do and what you were called to do. But bless God, because the cares of the world and you got your mind on other things or circumstances and the cares of uh, something's going on in your life, hallelujah, they're not quite as committed as you once were. Yes. <clears throat> it's because you're not following hard after God. You know what you're following hard after? The hand of God rather than the face of God. We're seeking God's hand. God heal me. God touch me. God do this. God do that. Rather than saying, God, I just want you. <clears throat> when you learn to seek the healer, not the healing. When you learn to seek the, the, the one who brings you a breakthrough, not just the breakthrough itself. You start to realize something. He's the one. And my soul's got to follow after him. But see, somewhere along the line, we get hardships come and stuff, and all of a sudden we're praying so much for our hard times and for everything we're going through that all of a sudden we're seeking the answers of God rather than the God of the answers. Yes. And we're missing it. That's why I believe that a lot of prayers, what we think are going are unanswered right now. Because people are seeking God's hand, what he can do for them, rather than seeking his face, what you can do for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's good preaching. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you need to know what the word relentless means. <clears throat> relentless is a showing or promising of no abatement of severity, intensity, strength, or pace. Now, first of all, if you're like me, and you can be honest, you cannot. I had to look up what abatement was. <laughs> so just in case you're as uneducated as I am, Here's what abatement is. <laughs> Abatement's the ending, reduction, or the lessening of something. The ending, reduction, or lessening of something. What are we ending? Or We're ending or uh, the showing or promising of no ending. Do you see that? Yes. Of no ending. You've got to put them together. No ending, no reduction, not even lessening of something. My pursuit of God is has to have a spirit of abatement upon it where there's no chance, there's no way, there's no sign of ending, there's no sign of reduction, there's no sign of lessening or backing down. Hallelujah. Look at some of the, the other words for it. Subsiding, dying down, dying away, dying out, lessening, easing off, letting up, decreasing, moderation or declining. Because yeah. I'm relentless. I'm showing and promising no chance of those things and the severity, intensity, and strength and the pace that I'm at. Hallelujah. Because here's the thing. Some of you, you're saying, well, 
We've got to have balance. I believe we've got to have balance in life. I believe you've got to balance your work life. You've got to balance your family life. You've got to balance uh, your church life. You've got to balance all these things. But in the midst of all that balance, if God is not the center point and the pinnacle that you're balancing off of, you're missing it. I don't care if you go to church all the time. If God ain't the center point of it, if it's only you going to church because you've got a job at church, Or maybe you only go to church because you're up on a platform somewhere. Your heart's not right with God. I don't come here because I'm the pastor. I come here to get in the presence of God because I'm in love with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And my soul follows hard after him. Because it ain't about my position. You want to know what my position should always be? Here's what's about to happen to some people. I heard it in the spirit when I was praying last night. The word timber. There's a lot of people walking around like you think you're all that in a bag of chips. We're puffed up with our abilities or our talents or our giftings. We're puffed up with our positions. We're puffed up with our money. We're puffed up with our jobs and our careers and our education. And we get all puffed up and we think we're all that. And I hear the Lord saying, Timber! Because you will not see the hand of God, you will not see the face of God for sure until you learn to humble yourself before the God. I, and so I just feel like it's a timber moment. Here's the only position that's available. By the way, we're looking for several to fill this position. We have several openings at this church for this position. <laughs> Hallelujah! Like it or lump it, that's what the word said. You got to realize something. I love you enough to tell you the truth. We got a position of humility that's got to be manifesting before men. Hallelujah. God don't want it, and man don't want to see it. If you want to walk around puffed up, that's religion. Religion will send you to hell. You know what I mean? You know just enough about God to go to hell is all you know. But when you get a hold of God and God gets a hold of you, glory to God, and your soul's falling hard after him to seek his face, glory to God, it changes things. It changes circumstances. Hallelujah. And he said, if you humble yourself in due season, God will exalt you. But we got men trying to exalt themselves. And they're missing the point. And they're going around and they're frustrated. And when I say men, I'm talking about the species, men and women. But they're frustrated. They're disappointed. They're discouraged with church, with God, with all these things. And why? It starts back at home in your heart. Are you humble before the Lord? Are you thankful for what God has done? Are you thankful for what God is doing? <laughs> because if you're not, you're going to miss this. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you something, and I don't, and I don't, I don't get him or wrong. I ain't, I ain't getting on nobody. I ain't thinking of nobody. I'm telling you this. This is a word from the Lord tonight that you need to hear this, that you need to be free from yourself. It ain't the devil. It's yourself that you're caught up in. And because you're caught up in yourself so much, you're not seeing God do the things that God promised you. Why? Because God can't take control when you still got a hold of the wheel. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're saying, Jesus, take the wheel. And you got Carrie Underwood in the background singing all these good things. But let, let go. You're still trying to control things. Yeah. That's the reason you end up, you're like Abraham and Sarah, you're ending up with a bunch of Ishmaels rather than the Isaac that God promised you. Because yes. you're trying to do it your way. Yes. You're trying to figure it out your way. Well, if we do this and this and this, then this and this and this will happen. You see how that worked out for you? Or how is it working out for you? I don't know about you, but I've took that path before. Guess what? I ended up back to the same place, broken. Why? Because I didn't follow hard after God. I was following hard after God, and then I thought, I've been following God so long, I kind of got this down path, and we become professional Christians. Yes. And we start thinking, we know how to do this. We know how to do that. We know how to do it. And we miss the boat. Instead of realizing, you've heard me say it a dozen times probably this year, let alone preaching. But Brother Cletty Key, he said when the Holy Spirit falls, it makes us all Holy Ghost amateurs. In other words, we don't know it because God wants to do a new thing in our midst. Yes. Amen.
God, uh, I'll just put it out there. God wants to offend your religion. <laughs> he wants to get up in your religious face sometimes and say, that ain't me. Over here I am. Because when I'm in the place, when I'm in the house and I'm moving, there's humility. There's brokenness. Yes. Hallelujah. When I'm in the house, there's love. Hallelujah. When I'm in the house, there's forgiveness. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> when I'm in the house, there's not immaturity. Hallelujah. Because those that are mature in the Lord are not easily offended. Right. <laughs> so I hope I didn't offend you tonight. If I did, you big babies. Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? You know what I mean. I love you. Yes. I've got to tell you the truth. This is for all of us. I'm preaching to Pastor Tim. I'm preaching to all of us. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Because <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what. The, the move of the Spirit, what God's been doing, and the things that He's been healing, He's been touching people's lives and people being saved, hallelujah, that's directly connected to the humility. Absolutely. That's directly connected to you realizing it ain't about you, it ain't about me, it ain't about none of us. Jesus. That's also directly realize that if you don't do what you're called to do, God will replace you. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> not because He's mean, not because nobody wants anybody. But because the move of God of what God wants to do is bigger than you. It's bigger than your ego. Jesus. Hello. Right. Well, he then went from, he's done meddling now. <coughs> Where are we at? <coughs> Look here. First Chronicles 16, 8. Give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds amongst his people. You wonder why I tell people to testify? You're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Yes. Hallelujah. Why do we always the time say, hey, God did this, God did that? Because it says, make known his deeds among his people. Let people know what God's doing. Amen. Uh, verse 9 says, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Amen. You want to come up and talk to me, quit talking to me about everybody else and talk to me about God's wondrous works. Amen. I want to hear, what's the Lord doing in your life? What's the Lord doing in your family? <laughs> but see, you can't come and tell me that a lot of times because you're so full of yourself and talking about everybody else and about woe is me and your problems that you're missing what God's trying to do. He's got wondrous works He wants to pour on you and your family. He's got miracles He wants to do, but you're caught up in yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory in his name, in his holy name. Let the heart of them that rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them who rejoice seek the Lord. <laughs> See? Rejoice. I looked at that word, and that's rejoy. Is it not? I'm redoing my joy is to rejoice. <laughs> Amen? Does the Bible not say in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is my strength? So right here, glory ye in the holy name. Let the heart of them who re-strengthen seek the Lord. Those that re-strengthen themselves in the Lord. Well, I don't know about that. Well, James chapter 1 verse 5, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations and trials. See, I looked at that scripture when I first read it and I said, Lord, I don't like that scripture. I'm supposed to be happy every time there's a trial or tribulation. You have to joy. Yay. <laughs> there's problems in my life. Yay. That ain't what it's talking about. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So when I fall into divers temptations and trials, count on the strength of the Lord to get me through it. You see that? The joy of the Lord. See, right here, to rejoice is to re-strengthen myself. What does that mean? Well, I don't know about y'all, but every time I'm feeling down and out and there's all this stuff coming on and there are all these things going through my brain and I just get along with the Lord and I just start to worship Him and I may be in a house full of people like uh, on Sunday mornings or whenever or I may be driving down the road or I may be in my, uh, out in the yard or whatever, but when I begin to rejoice and seek the Lord, not His hand, seek the Lord, all of a sudden I'm re-strengthening the God. I'm re-strengthening the Lord. It begins to happen because why? I'm rejoicing. I'm re-strengthening. <laughs> Amen. Look here at verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face 
every now and then. <laughs> Continually. Continually. Even when you wake up in the middle of the night and your belly's tummy, tummy's a little upset. <laughs> you seek the Lord. <laughs> Even when you wake up early in the morning, hallelujah, and it's still dark outside and all the waves of the world try to come at you and, you, and you, you're trying to get that first cup of coffee or whatever uh, monster drink or whatever you're drinking there, hallelujah, and you're getting that first one in you and before you know it, you're already getting texts and stuff with your problems. You're already getting phone calls. You're already looking at Facebook, glory to God. <laughs> Y'all quiet, but you know I'm tapping into something tonight. I'm in, we're in somebody's business tonight. <laughs> I'm telling you, seek him, his face continually. <laughs> when I seek his face, you got to realize something. I know he's near. <laughs> I know he's near. <laughs> Let me show you how near he is. <laughs> right here, I'm over here with Tom. I can see Tom right now, and I can recognize his face. Hallelujah. I don't know who y'all are, but I would love to get to know you, and then I'll recognize you, and I can see Bailey. I can see that, but I can look over there, and I know who's sitting over there, but you can't see their faces, can you? Y'all see her? Can you tell what their face is? Can you tell who that is? Can you tell who's hanging out in the back rows? Who is that? No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Just that distance, I can't tell whose face that is. Y'all getting this? But as I draw nearer, and they draw nearer to me. Yeah. I'm like, whoo, that's Sean. <laughs> that's Sean's here tonight. Do I know Sean's in the house? You got to realize something. When I'm away from God, I don't see his face clearly. But as I draw near to him, the humility and brokenness, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's it's Jesus. He's, he's here. He's in the house tonight. Because I can see him. I can see him. I see him clearly. Why? Because I'm getting close to him. And I'm seeking his face continually. I'm not seeking his hand. I'm seeking his face. See, so you can look over here. and There's my hand. Do you recognize me because of my hands? Huh? Can anybody? Okay. Tell me which one's my right and I'm <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't recognize somebody because their hands. You recognize them because their face. But yet we try to judge whether it's the Lord or not moving by what we see his hands doing. But if you were seeking his face, you'd know what was God and what wasn't of God. <clears throat> You're looking to recognize him in the wrong direction. You know why? You throw police up. Well, Lord, if you really want me to serve you, I want a lightning bolt hit that mountain right there on <laughs> If you're really real, if you want to heal me, if it's your way, yeah. And we put out these crazy fleeces. That's because you're looking for his hand, and you think you're going to recognize God because of his hand, but you're not seeing his hand because he's not trying to show you his hand. He's trying to show you his face, but you won't get close enough to him. <laughs> Somebody going to catch this <laughs> This will change your life This changed my life <clears throat> When I learned to seek the face of God Rather than the hand of God yes. It changed everything in my life <laughs> Yeah I went through some stuff and Yeah I've been around the block a few times And I've uh, been rode hard And put up wet All these things And I, you know there's a little more gray All these things happening But I'm here to tell you yes, <laughs> I'm still here yeah. Tom we're still here we're still in the presence of God, still doing what God called to do, not because I saw his hand, but because I saw his face. Yeah. When there wasn't nobody in this building, when this building was about to fall down, the side of them fell down, we had to close the bathroom, and we don't know what's going on. We don't even know if it's going to stand up another day. Glory to God. I didn't seek his hand to say, God, fix this building. I saw his face and said, God, I don't care if we're in a shack out back, if we're down on the river bank. It don't matter. I just want to be where you are. I want to see your face. And when you seek his face, it changes things. <coughs> that's why my soul follows hard after him. Yes. And that's where it is. <coughs> and don't anybody get, get your feathers all ruffled about this, but I'm going to say it like this. I don't mean anything mean by it, but I'm going to just tell you the truth, okay? 
I love you enough to do it, and this is where I'm at with my walk with God. This is where I'm at in pastoring. It's where I'm at in preaching. It's where I'm at in ministry. Glory to God. It's not about you. I love you. And my wife will still text you, and she'll still Facebook you and say I missed you and all this thing like that. But here's the thing. If I've got to text you and I've got to call you or I've got to Facebook you to say, hey, come to church. We've been missing you, and that's the only reason you come to church. You need to get saved. Because I don't come because I had to get invited to come. I come because the presence of God's here and I want to see his face. If the only reason you're coming is because of this preacher or the preacher's wife or one of those things, well, you're missing what this is about. If you only come because oh, I like the music or I like this or that, like, those are just fringe benefits. Come because Jesus is showing up and showing out. If he ain't showing up, I ain't showing up. If he ain't going to be here, I don't want to be here. I don't want to go through just another church service. I don't want to go through a religious ritual. I want to experience the presence of God. I want to see the face of God. I want to see the miracles of God and all those things, but I know they come from seeking His face. Yes. See, we even fell into a trap in the late 90s and into the, two, in the 2000s. There was great moves of God through the 90s, and I believe the American church fell into this trap, and I believe some of them are still in this trap today. And here's the thing. The trap was there was a great move of God in Pensacola, Florida. Browns were revival. Glory to God. You had a great move of God in Toronto, Canada. Hallelujah. The Toronto blessing. And all these great moves of God were happening. And then all of a sudden, all the preachers, me included, hallelujah, we start seeking revival. God, just send revival. Send revival to Kentucky. Send revival to Western Kentucky. Send revival to Providence. Send revival to New Covenant Christians. Send revival. Send revival. Instead of sending the God of revival. We sought revival more than we sought the Lord. Hello? <coughs> See, I've been in this long enough that I can admit. But I'm here to tell you, when God starts showing me, if you'll quit seeking revival and you just seek me, I'll take care of this other stuff. <coughs> See, I don't have to run everywhere looking for him because he's always near. I thank God for all these things. And I, I love going to some of these meetings and I've experienced great things. I'm not putting people down for that. But I'm here to tell you, if I can't find him in my local church, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> if I can't find him in my house when I get home tonight, <laughs> if he ain't in that old black truck when I get in it out there and I fire up that diesel, glory to God, I don't need to be in, the, in it. You know what I'm saying? I want to be where he is. I seek the Lord in his strength and seek his face continually. <laughs> Glory to God. See, here's what the Lord spoke to me. <laughs> this was in the middle of my belly growling last night. Hallelujah. I just took away from the value of that, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry about that. Y'all erase that out of your mind. <laughs> here's the thing. Relentless pursuit produces passion. When you have a relentless pursuit of something, it produces passion. <laughs> now, see, we got passion for all kinds of things. We can have passion for our hobbies. We can have passion for uh, music. We can have passion for this or that. Uh, I have a passion for cooking. <coughs> okay? Hallelujah. Uh, my wife, a lot of people don't know this, but she was a professional archer. She shot for Team Matthews. They paid for her to go out. She shot in a Triple Crown. You know, she shot in the World Championships in upstate New York, come in seventh in the world. <laughs> I mean, uh, so I don't make her mad. And, <laughs> but <laughs> she's a good shot and I consider myself a country boy and I, I well, we can skin a buck we can run a trot line <laughs> you know and next thing I know she's showing me pictures she's giving more bigger deer than I ever thought about it <laughs> she looks like she's been hunting with Brent down on his farm <laughs> you know I mean always big deer she's killed bigger deer than me <laughs> but she had such a passion for it that she said she was off one day at practice. So she went home, <coughs> put the kids to bed, and told them, don't come out of your room. And she set a target up in the hallway. <laughs> this is a true story. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> and she's in her house <laughs> shooting down the hallway so she could get that bow in because she had a big uh, meet the next day, <coughs> which I reckon she went once. She's won the Kentucky State Champ. But see, passion will cause you to go outside of the box. You see what I'm saying? 
I showed you a passion for motion, but what if we had a relentless pursuit that produced passion for Jesus? Yes. <laughs> that we went outside the box, that maybe we need to go put the kids to bed a little bit because we need to learn to hit the mark in our lives. Absolutely, yes. Because you know what sin is? Missing the mark. That's right. Brent preached on it while we were gone yes. <laughs> on vacation yes. about that restriction and about exactly. drawing back the bow. <laughs> you know, we need to realize something. Our passion... Hallelujah. It comes from our relentless pursuit. See, if you're not relentlessly pursuing the face of God, guess what? You're not going to have a passion for God or the work of the Lord. You know what? You're going to be going through the motions. What does that mean? That means you go to church and you show up, and if you miss, it ain't no big deal. Because it's not as important to you as maybe it once was. Because your passion's going. Why? Because the relentless pursuit's Dropped off. <clears throat> oh, brother, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. I ain't talking about you going to heaven. I'm talking about you getting about the Father's business <laughs> here on earth. I'm talking about you enjoying the trip. A relentless pursuit produces passion. <laughs> but here's the thing that God spoke to me. Look at this. It changed. I put down, and I typed this out earlier this morning. I put passion produces purpose. And God says, no, it don't. <laughs> I said, what do you mean it don't? <laughs> You just gave it to me, passion, produ he goes, no, you thought it, you get, I, I gave you the word passion and purpose, right. and you just automatically put purpose. produced it, right. but the Lord told me passion creates purpose, yep. oh, yeah. right. passion bursts yes. purpose. See, a lot of us, we're frustrated with our walks with God, we're frustrated with situations in our lives and all this, it's because we lack purpose. And we're lacking purpose because we've not let passion birth purpose. <laughs> See, passion, when you have passion for your wife or passion for your husband, it creates or births children in your life, does it not? Yes. There has to be passion. Passion creates or births purpose in our lives. It births purpose in God. But when we not relentlessly pursue Him, we can't have the passion in order to produce or create and birth the purpose of God. That's the reason people are wandering around, been saved for 20 years, and say, what you call to do? Say, I don't know. <clears throat> what you feel like the Lord's telling you to do? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know because you're not allowed the passion to come to a fever pitch. It will not come to a fever pitch till you're relentlessly pursuing his face. <laughs> See, when I'm up close to him and I'm where I can recognize him, guess what? I don't have to hear the thunderings of God's voice. I don't have to hear him say, Tell him thou shalt. No, when I'm up face to face, because Moses said, He may talk to you in dreams and visions, but he talks to his pastor Moses face to face, mouth to mouth. Yes. Guess what? When I'm up here and I'm talking to my wife, I don't have to say, Hey, Barb! <laughs> In fact, it's more passionate when I say, Hey, honey, I love you. I love you with all my heart. You're my everything. That's passion. <laughs> passion is not birthed through the thunderings. Passion is birthed through the intimacy. Y'all getting this? And when passion is birthed through the intimacy, it creates and bursts purpose in our lives. I can understand it. Why? Because I can hear the whispering. You understand? See, it's a still small voice that he speaks to me and says, go here, go there, do this, do that. Why? Because he don't have to shout it out to me. Why? Because I'm close enough to him to hear his whisper. Are you close enough to hear his whisper? Are you down the road and him saying, Hey, y'all, come down here. I'm down here. You see the difference? <laughs> what type of relationship would you have with your spouse if they had, you was across the room from the other end of the house and all of your conversations had to happen by you yelling back and forth? <laughs> now, don't y'all answer that because some of you may live that way. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's the passion. Well, brother, we've been married this many years. When you get married this many years, I don't care. I don't care how long you've been married. 
when you truly love and you're truly passionate, it's still the same, if not greater, than what it was at the beginning. <clears throat> There's you a note. That's a side note for you men and for you women. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love more than you've ever loved before. <clears throat> Don't take for granted your spouse. <clears throat> Don't take for granted that opportunity to whisper in her ear again. <clears throat> That's what they say, whisper sweet nothings. <clears throat> I found out that the sweet nothings of the Lord turn into sweet somethings. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Relentless pursuit. But here's how it happens. Matthew 6, 33. Very familiar scripture. But seek you first. First. <clears throat> first. The kingdom of God. Seek the Lord, the kingdom of God, first. Before I seek relationship. Before I seek careers. Before I seek job opportunities, before I seek positions, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What's his righteousness? <laughs> right standing. <clears throat> See, there's a lot of people that say, but they're still not in right standing with God. Does that make sense to you? That, that's like an oxymoron. You say, How can you be saved and not be in right standing with God? There's a lot of people that ask the Lord to come in their heart, ask God to forgive their sins, and he did, but they're not in the will of God. That's what that means. And if you don't believe there's Christians that are not in the will of God, I don't know what rock you're living underneath. <laughs> Look around. If every Christian in America, if every Christian in this church even, was living and doing what God wanted them to do, was in the will of God, glory to God, we'd have such a revival we couldn't feel. We'd, I mean, every day we'd just have to say, okay, we need to buy a new building today. We need a bigger building today. Uh, okay, let's get tents. Okay, now let's get another tent. <laughs> you don't believe me? That Ron Hart Bonke <laughs> just had a series of meetings. <laughs> and we need to pray for him. He's very ill and going through some situation. But <laughs> he had a series of meetings over in Africa. <laughs> and a 10-day meeting, they had 675,000 people come to know Jesus. <laughs> That's over a half million people got added to the kingdom of God in a 10-day meeting in a tent. 10 days, all right? And you say, well, that's over in Africa. Well, get you a tent and go over to Africa and see if you get a half a million people come to know Jesus in 10 days. <laughs> it don't happen because they had a tent or because they was going to preach. People don't get saved just because you want to do something. It's because there's a seeking of the Lord. They're seeking the kingdom of God first. <laughs> They didn't seek to build their own kingdom. They sought to build the kingdom of the Lord. Here at New Covenant, at the well, you've got to realize something. It ain't about how many people we put in these seats. That's right. <clears throat> I'm not trying, and Barb and I, it's not our vision to build a kingdom here. Our vision is to build the kingdom of God. Amen. <clears throat> when you build the kingdom of God, God will add the rest of this stuff. He'll, he'll take care of that stuff. I don't worry about this. I don't worry about that because i got to put my eyes on the Lord. I can't worry about who's here and who ain't here. I can't worry about how many people's here or how many what. You know, they'll come and tell me sometimes. I said, don't count them, don't I? I said, don't count. That's right. I don't want to know. You say, why don't you want to know? We need a board up here and we'll put out how many. It? Because your pride gets involved. Hello? Your pride gets involved. Well, we had this meeting. And I have to guard myself. When it's packed and I see people sitting out folding chairs at some of the Sunday morning meetings, I'm kind of like, Lord, I'm preaching to you. I'm singing to you. I'm not singing to anybody. Because it ain't about me. It ain't about how many people's in here. It ain't about how big the barns is. That's right. It's about the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteous being right with the Lord. And all these things are going to be added to you. Guess what? Some of you got some needs. Some of you got physical needs in your body. Some of you got spiritual needs. Some of you got financial needs. Some of you got emotional needs. Some of you need jobs. You need this. You need that. You got all kinds of things. And I'm not demising all that. Some of you need a miracle. Some of you need healing to your bodies that just has to be a miracle. But I'm here to tell you, seek first the kingdom of God and being right with God in right standing. Then these things will be added to you. What does that mean? It means I can't seek his hand. I got to seek his face. I got to seek his face. And I can't just do it half-heartedly. I got to do it whole hog. 
relentless pursuit. Relentless pursuit. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word. It doesn't go out void, but it accomplishes what it's sent to do, and it's pleasing and prosperous in your sight. I ask you, Lord, tonight to give us a spirit of relentless pursuit that we want to run hard after you, God. Lord, we've ran after this and ran after that. Lord, we're not going to do it anymore. We repent, Lord. We want to run hard after you. Folks, we want to thank you for tuning in with us today. We hope that something has been said or done here today that has touched you, and we just pray for you right now. We want to lead a prayer right now as we close this service out. Amen. So just right there, if something's touched your yes. heart, if uh, something's deal dealing with your heart, whether yes. it be to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or if you've known Him, you've drawn away from right. Him, and you're wanting to draw back, if you need healing to your yes. body, if you need a touch, whatever it may be, deliverance, if you need to be set free from yes, drugs, sir. alcohol, addictions, right. God is a mountain-moving yes, God. He He's still in the saving business. He's still in the delivering business. Yes. And so we want to pray with you. So just join with us yes, as we join Lord our Jesus. faith with you. Yes, Lord God. Jesus, we ask you yes. right now that whoever's watching out there, yes, Lord, Lord, whatever their need may be, God, that you meet them right now. Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to go down there wherever they're at, whether they're watching on their phone or on their computer or a Roku. Lord, that you just touch them right there and just embrace them with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord, we ask for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to change their life. Lord, we ask for the encouragement of the Holy Ghost, Lord, just to begin to reach down and lift them up and real, them yes, realize Lord. that there's a purpose in their life. There's a purpose in the situation they're going through. There's even a purpose in your pain. And God, for those that need healing in their body, Lord, we pray the divine touch of the Holy Spirit, yes, that, Lord, you touch them at the wherever they are, whatever the pain yes, is, God. whatever the sickness or disease. Lord, you said that by your stripes yes. they are healed. Yes. And Lord, we believe you and your word and we trust you when you're with your word. And Lord, I speak to addictions. I yes. speak against those yes. that are struggling with addictions in their life. Lord, I ask you to break off that yoke of bondage. You said you sent the anointing to break, annihilate, yes. and destroy every yoke of bondage. And Lord, we speak for them to be touched right now. And God, we give you glory for what you're doing in people's lives ahead of time. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you've been touched today, if you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, or you rededicated your life, if you were healed, if whatever the case may be, if you were set free, won't you drop us a line uh, on our website or on our apps and let us know, give us a praise report of what's mm -hmm. went on in your life. Or if you have a prayer request, send in your prayer request there. We pray over every prayer request. We have a team that believes God with you and will continue to believe. So there again, we thank you for watching. Remember, tune in the next time. Watch as you are. You, you won't, won't be the, the same. same. May your glory fill.